What's up everybody, Dr. Joe here today answering questions about how to maximize agility and the best way to do that for tennis athletes. Uh, if you need my credentials, they're in the description. This video, we're gonna go rapid fire. I'm gonna give you a lot of information in a short amount of time. So try and pay attention, listen up. If you need to go back, rewatch something, do it. Uh, but we're gonna get through these and we're gonna go by components. Our first component is just gonna be strength. Strength of that Achilles calf complex. This is something that has to be strong if we want to be agile. If we can't produce force and absorb force, then it doesn't matter. We need strength to do that. Here, we're going to isolate the soleus, which is a specific part of that calf complex, but it can get that heel way high off of the ground. Um, here, we're going to get medial lateral stability, and we're going to work the arch of the foot. Um, he's hovering his heel, and then he's going basically these slight inward and outward movements from that midfoot joint to make sure we can absorb those side to side, side sources. Um, this is just straight up strength. Load it, get the heels off the ground, hit the calf and Achilles plank complex, hit it hard, make it strong. Um, we're going to get in some sprint start positions to make sure we get nose over toes loaded or forward. The heels are off the ground. These are all big components of being agile. This is really more for control. This is just a really subtle shift from the heel into the forefoot to load that calf and Achilles complex we talked about before. Storage and release is our next component. So we've got to be able to land, absorb that force, store it in the tendons, and then unleash it. That is maybe the biggest part of agility. Um, you're going to see a lot of variations of this. Um, the first one was just one hop. These are two little, one big, so we're changing the amount of force. We also got forward movement. The next movements we're going to go through, we're going to get movements in different directions. I love this little grid pattern. I do recommend it for anyone training agility, um, adding a component of control there as we work storage and release. Angled surface training. Um, I actually built these myself. Uh, there's some research studies out there that show an improved ability to um, activate the peroneal muscles or the lateral ankle muscles, uh, which are believed to have a, a special input for agility and speed. Explosion, again, we got to take that strength. We've got to apply that strength quickly. So we're going to do explosive movements. We might even combine it with storage and release here. We're taking some small hops, alternated with big hops. We're doing single leg versions along with those double leg versions. We're going to get some um, side to side movement here coming up in a second and upward vertical force generation. Again, you need all of them. You got to be able to move in every direction. Um, sprint sleds. These are huge, just big time uh, propulsion. Decelerations are next area. You got to be able to land and absorb force. The way we absorb force and get ourselves into position sets us up for that next time that we have to generate force. So if I can get him to land under control here, then he can produce force more quickly and the next movement comes. We always want to make sure there's an ability to react to the stimulus. That's what we're doing here. So this time the stimulus is a person. We're creating some competition to get that reaction to stimulus. This one I'm demonstrating here making sure we're understanding what to do, how to react, how to position the body. We're going to let the client go do it themselves. Again, ball to respond, ball to respond, ball to respond. No thinking, just pure reaction. Make it quick. Reaction lights, blaze pods, great accessory. Um, if you are doing a lot of agility training, if, if you work with clients who need it or you are a client, check out the blaze pods, um, random activation to um, focus on reaction time. Again, more competition here. Just get people competing because everyone wants to beat up on one another. So if we create some competition, we're going to maximize performance and agility and all things. This little bit of a bonus piece here. I like to work in circuits. Again, agility is not done in isolation. Sometimes it's got to be done in a fatigued state. So we're going to do different intervals to challenge those things. Again, um, hope those were helpful. You need to look at it again. Go back, um, check them out. If you have any questions for me, drop them in the comments. Thanks, and be agile.